It's championship time for Cheesecake the One Pound Combat Robot. After many amazing tournaments, the Garden State Combat Robotics League decided to host its first regional championship to find the best of the best and make them fight to the death. Needless to say, Cheesecake was extremely excited to join the party, but there were a few upgrades we needed to make. At our last tournament, Cheesecake fought a vicious undercutter that ripped open his chassis by shearing off the heads of the screws holding it together. To avoid this, I switched from button head screws to countersunk screws. The next upgrade was to replace my finger tech drive motors with repeat robotics drive motors. As proven by Shotgun in our recent fight, these repeat motors can take some serious damage and keep on spinning, so I'm excited to see if they'll work for Cheesecake. But we're not done with upgrades just yet. As I looked at the other robots who signed up for the event, I saw undercutters, undercutters, undercutters. I don't think my countersunk screws are going to be enough. I need a plan. I need... something to protect the base of my weapon motor. That's the one very vulnerable place that an undercutter can hit. So, how do you counter an undercutter? Well, an undercutter is basically just a horizontal spinner. So, how do you counter a horizontal spinner? Hmm, I wonder. Sparks! Oh yeah, with a big stupid wedge. Unfortunately, Cheesecake doesn't have enough spare weight for a big stupid wedge, but what about a small stupid wedge? What about this? This is a small, upside-down wedge that bolts under my weapon motor. My hope is that this will allow me to skip over my opponent's undercutter and deliver my own weapon into his chassis. Or, it will act as extra armor and absorb energy as it gets mangled. Either way, it's better than the nothing I used before. You get nothing! This little wedge is made of grade 5 titanium, just like the wedge of Dulce de Lucha and I was able to get it bent and welded by a company called RE Combat Robotics, one of the few suppliers who can actually bend grade 5 titanium. Check them out if you want to make your own stupid wedge. As for me, I've decided to name my stupid wedge the Cake Slice. Those are the upgrades, let's see if they work. For this championship tournament, the competitors were seeded into the bracket based on their performance at previous tournaments hosted by the Garden State Combat Robotics League. Cheesecake was the number one seed because of his undefeated first place finishes at the last two tournaments, so Cheesecake got a bye in the first round. My first opponent was a good old fashioned wedge bot named Super Space Turtle. Well, not exactly old fashioned. Super Space Turtle has a massive TPU wedge, unlike anything I'd ever seen before. But Cheesecake knows what to do against wedges. Slap on the sweet tooth and see what happens. And yes, I apologize for the glare on the side of the box, not much I can do about it, but it does get better in the next fights. And the big robot with purple wheels is a referee bot whose job is to dislodge stuck robots. That's a new thing for this tournament. Anyway, let's kick it off. Three, two, one, fight! My steering isn't responding too well, I set the limits too low, and the vibration of my weapon is causing me to lose traction on my wheels. I'm trying to get to his wheels, but he's not making it easy. My weapon seems to be a little unbalanced, so running it at full speed takes away some of my control, and I need to decide if I want full weapon power or full steering control. You can pin and hold an opponent for up to 10 seconds at a time. Okay, 
I'm getting some nice hits on his wedge, but his wedge is designed to take some nice hits. There we go, I think I damaged his drive. All right, the sweet tooth still works. Although his TPU wedge absorbed my hits surprisingly well before I managed to get to his wheels. As it turns out, his wheels are friction driven, using a motor shaft that's sandwiched between them, and I was able to rip off one of those axles to disable his drive. My next fight was against Impulse, one of the many scary undercutters at this tournament. This meant it was time to break out the cake slice and see if it performed better than nothing. And, unlike a lot of other robots, Impulse has some solid looking wheel guards, so this was going to be a really tough fight. Three, two, one, fight! Here they go, meeting in the middle of the arena again, and two good hits to start. Two good three good hits to start weapon on weapon exchange as well as much as they can be undercutter and a mid cutter are not exactly gonna meet but still sparks are flying and these two bots showing some good resilience these are hard hard hits that they're exchanging but Cheesecake, obviously one of the better bots. His weapon got stuck in my TPU side armor. Impulse has got its weapon lodged in Cheesecake. We are pausing. We are stopping. So hands off controllers, please, as we try to unstick these two bots. Three, two, one, resume fighting. And both bots are spinning up their weapons. It's always good to see after an unstick. Not guaranteed that both bots' weapons will be working. Oh, and a big hit! And a piece flies off a bot! I think that was Cheesecake that actually lost it, or... The announcers got confused about which robot was which. Cheesecake is fine. Of, uh, Cheesecake. It's, it's hard to tell with the bot turning so fast, but I think you're right. I think Cheesecake has lost its left front. But both weapons seem to be doing okay. Yoink! And it's still a whole lot of, uh, oh, my. oh, cheesecake is disintegrating. Cheesecake falling to pieces. Cheesecake is fine. Nothing is ruined. It's not, composition. not very Impulse. often. Does that mean it needs more eggs or more Oh, and another big oh. hit. And that's Impulse's left tire. And, and, and that's a tap out. Impulse has tapped. Cheesecake takes it. That is Wheels! Delicious wheels! It took a long time, but I finally managed to get to his wheels. I was kind of scared when one of his wheel guards got stuck on my weapon, but I was able to feed it into his weapon to dislodge it. And how did the cake slice do? It worked! Despite Impulse's much longer weapon reach, I didn't take any damage to my weapon motor. The scratches on the cake slice show that it did in fact deflect some hits. However, the other driver explained that he wasn't able to spin his weapon at full speed. So while this may not have been a true test, I can at least say that the cake slice works in principle. So that's good news. And despite his weapon issues, Impulse did manage to get some good hits on my frame and my wheel, so I replaced a few of those parts just to be safe. My next fight was a rematch against Shin Kicker, the cutest antweight undercutter. The last time we fought, Cheesecake won pretty convincingly, but Shin Kicker has gotten some major upgrades since then. He now has TPU wheels instead of his old foam wheels, and an even bigger weapon, and his weapon motor is now off to the side where it's much harder to hit. With these upgrades, Shin Kicker won his first two fights of the day, just like Cheesecake, so now it was time for these two undefeated robots to collide. 
Grab your cake slice and let's go. Get around to the side and... Ooh, that's not good. I think my weapon's dead. Yep, it's jammed up or something. My only hope now is to shove him into the wall and break his weapon. Wait, Shin Kicker's not moving. Okay, that was a great fight and a very lucky result. Before Shin Kicker broke my weapon, I was able to mess up his wheels just enough to jam up his drive, and he just couldn't make it to the end of the fight. But wait, how did Shin Kicker break my weapon? What about the cake slice? Well, the cake slice absolutely worked, and you can even see here that it did exactly what I wanted. The robots come together, Cheesecake's nose skates over Shin Kicker's weapon, then Cheesecake's weapon makes contact with Shin Kicker's chassis, giving him a nice big gash across his face. But a short while later, this happened. The angle must have been different or something, because Shin Kicker punched right through the titanium. That is crazy. I don't think either of us expected that. Shin Kicker is quickly becoming an extremely dangerous robot. So, by the skin of his teeth, Cheesecake defeated Shin Kicker and moved on to the next round. My next fight was against. Oh god. My next fight was against. Temper. Temper is a vicious hammer saw robot, like Sawblaze from the BattleBots TV show, but more importantly, Temper weighs 50% more than a standard ant weight, all the way up at 1.5 pounds, which is allowed because of its unique movement system. According to the rules, if your robot moves using some kind of shuffling cam mechanism instead of wheels, your robot becomes eligible for a 50% weight bonus, because shuffler systems are more complex and more fragile. Not to mention, they tend to be very slow. Temper, however, seems to have cracked the code, and it can move just as fast as any wheeled robot I've seen, which means that little one-pound cheesecake has to fight this one-and-a-half-pound monster. Now, I knew ahead of time that Temper would be at this tournament, so I came up with a plan. I realized that I didn't need any side armor to fight Temper, but I desperately needed top armor, so I removed all 33 grams of TPU side armor and replaced it with 33 grams of titanium top armor. If I can survive just one or two hits, that should give me enough time to do some kind of damage and hopefully disable Temper's beautiful shuffling mechanism. It's not a great plan, but it's all I've got. Three, two, one, boy! And totally meant to do that. Crossing the box first, Cheesecake does a quick little oh. sidestep. And here we go, we might get that hit, and a big hit! And we see pieces flying off of Cheesecake. My wheel is stuck in his weapon. That is a wheel that Temper, Temper saying, I want a piece of that cake. Temper just took the wheel off of Cheesecake. Cheesecake moving pretty well despite losing a wheel, but now their, their margin for error is almost gone. That weapon's still going, pieces flying all around the cage. Oh! And the wheel is stuck! 
so he takes a good hit stuck in Temper's weapon, and it can't get it free. That's a great call. That's exactly why that weapon isn't spun up. So Cheesecake may have disabled this Temper's weapon. Yes. And is now... So now we're just getting some tapping, some very aggressive tapping in the corner now. It does count as a pin for bonk, control. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And uh, now we'll see if Cheesecake can make its way out. Cheesecake's weapon, obviously very formidable. And we'll see if uh, Temper can eject that, that wheel. If Temper can do that, they'll be uh, very, very dangerous again. So, what, also to keep in mind, Temper, Temper does have the advantage here because Temper has full mobility and is able to win the pushing war. You know, I'm not sure Temper has full mobility. I think oh. one of its sides is down and the other side, like it's only able to move in circles right now. Okay. I wonder if its right side is locked up. There's another big hit from Cheesecake. Cheesecake may have a chance yet. And that's the one thing about a hammer saw. They can always violently unstick themselves so long as that arm is working. There they go, going in circles, but I'm not convinced those, those, those wheels are working. I'm not sure. Cheesecake wants to go in for the kill. This has been a brutal fight for both spots. And with 30 seconds remaining, this fight has been explosive. Seriously, there's going to be a lot to clean up. Now, uh, Temper just moving just enough to avoid a count out. But very, very little movement to this last part of the fight from Temper. Temper we seeming. might see a count out really soon if time is not. Nope, we're just under 10 seconds, so it's going to go to the judges. Six, but five, my God. four, three, two, one. Oh. That's a top out. All right. We have tapped out. Temper is tapped out. Cheesecake still looking like remaining the reigning champion of winner's bracket. Wow. Okay. That is 100% not what I expected. Right out of the gate, Temper performed a surgical amputation of Cheesecake's right wheel, but this move jammed up his weapon for the remainder of the fight. According to the rules, entanglement devices are not allowed, but if your robot is not designed to be an entanglement hazard, then whatever happens, happens. Temper is a devastating robot, but if he chooses the wrong hit, he can very quickly disable his own weapon. This also happened in his previous fight against Lobot the same day. After losing my wheel, I was very lucky to still have mobility, and it was just enough to twist myself around and hit his drive. With his weapon disabled and half his drive destroyed, Temper could not keep fighting, and Cheesecake just barely got the win. I was actually kind of disappointed that Temper didn't hit my top armor, I made it just for you. You could at least try it. I guess there's always next time, and the tournament must go on. With this victory over Temper, Cheesecake was heading into the finals with an undefeated record, where he would face the winner of the loser's bracket. The loser's bracket was jam-packed full of vicious robots, including Temper, Shinkicker, and a robot called Mudskipper. Mudskipper defeated Shinkicker, and then moved on to fight Temper. Unfortunately, Temper was too badly damaged from his fight with Cheesecake, so Temper had to forfeit his fight against Mudskipper, and Mudskipper secured his spot in the grand final against Cheesecake. This was the match that so many people had been waiting for. Cheesecake has been on an absolute tear, but Mudskipper is nothing short of a monster. Like Temper, Mudskipper is a one and a half pound shuffler who has cracked the code of being speedy on feet. Mudskipper is a horizontal spinner and I thought he was more of an undercutter based on the pictures and videos online. But as soon as I saw him in real life, I realized just how big this robot was, and that Cheesecake's cake slice probably wasn't up to the challenge, both figuratively and literally not high up enough. Mudskipper used most of his shuffler weight bonus to drive a massive weapon from a massive motor, so my only hope was to get to his shuffler mechanisms, which have practically no armor. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one, fight! This is for the championship, the G-Scroll Championship in one pound. So Mudskipper getting knocked to the edge of the arena early. Remember, it moves on those little shuffling feet. It doesn't use wheels. 
Big hit on a piece of cheesecake gets knocked off. And my skipper just takes a beeline into the wall, stuck in the wall. So here comes Burnpike, going to try to unstick it and That's is now unstick. unstuck. That is one unstick. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Cheesecake's weapon has been just lost. My only hope now is to break his weapon. Without a weapon, that is just how powerful Mudskipper is. I believe this is the first time Cheesecake's weapon has been taken out ever. And uh, now another... Uh, another massive hit on Cheesecake, and much of its chassis opened up. Cheesecake's still able to drive around, but if it takes any more damage, we may have to stop the fight if it's if it's internal. Too much of its internals are exposed. We don't want its battery exposed. But another big hit for Mudskipper. I think the left drive side on Mudskipper is having some problems, but still that weapon is so, so powerful. So even though Cheesecake's weapon is taken out, uh, before it went, it was one of the only things able to damage my skipper. Yeah. Oh! 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 Yeah. Oh! Oh! And that is, uh, are we still fighting? I, I think we're... Go! Yeah, nothing has been exposed. That's all chassis. Oh, yeah. Alright. Massive hits. Yeah, win. Mud Skipper! Mud Skipper has taken the belt! Wow, um, well, the front fell off, and the sides, and the insides, everything fell off. Dang, um, that is a thing that happened. I knew that Mud Skipper was dangerous, but I don't think I really believed it until this fight. That was absolutely insane. Mud Skipper truly is a force to be reckoned with. Now, because this was a double elimination tournament, and because this was Cheesecake's first loss, I should have fought Mudskipper one more time before a winner was declared. However, my backup robot wasn't working for some reason, and there's no way I could have rebuilt from this fight, so the rematch just wasn't going to happen. If I'd been thinking more strategically, I would have tapped out after this hit which ripped off half my frame, so I'd be able to rebuild and try again in the second fight. But it honestly didn't occur to me to tap out. I thought I still had a chance after that hit, so I kept going, and I did manage to take out half of his drive somehow, but in hindsight, that was a pretty bad tactical error. And, if I'm being honest, another reason I didn't tap out is... I was having too much fun. Come on, Mars! It's fun to smash things! <laughs> I smashed it good! I mean, come on! Look at that destruction! I am so proud of Cheesecake for surviving so many hits. Cheesecake only stopped working after his battery was physically ripped out. This was honestly a fantastic result, even if it was a loss. After this incredible fight, the driver of Mudskipper was kind enough to gift me his used weapon, and I gifted him mine, which you'll notice has been completely ripped apart through the tool steel shaft I installed. That is insane. I guess it's true what people say, there's always a bigger fish. With this final fight, Cheesecake was awarded second place in the Garden State Combat Robotics League's first regional championship. Cheesecake had an amazing winning streak over these last three tournaments, but all good things must come to an end. Thank you all so much for joining me on this amazing journey. Cheesecake will be back, so make sure to subscribe, and if you'd like to contribute to Cheesecake's rebuild, you can leave us a super thanks. Thank you again for joining us on this journey, and stay tuned for more.